So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna be making an award-winning cacio e pepe. Ooh, what award was it? What what award was it? It was an Ig Nobel Prize, wasn't it? The the parody of the Nobel Prizes in physics. Cacio e pepe is a deceptively difficult dish. After all, it's just three ingredients: pasta, cheese, and pepper. How hard could it be? But it's combining those ingredients that's made folks like Benji with Babish almost give up on it, calling it easily one of the hardest things I've made. And that's because when the starch from the pasta combines with the protein from the cheese and the heat from the pan, it can easily enter what the researchers call the dreaded mozzarella phase, where the sauce becomes a clumpy, goopy mess. But the specific ratios and temperatures causing this failure point are still a mystery. What are you gonna do, make hundreds of batches of pasta meticulously controlling each individual variable? How many times did you guys have to make 450? 450, yes. Now, of course, these were petri dishes, not full plates, which then let the researchers analyze and measure the clumpiness of the sauce, which resulted in this beautiful diagram. On the y-axis, we have temperature, and that dark red zone is the mozzarella phase. And on the x-axis, we have the ratio of cheese. But what's weird is it doesn't form a straight line. It makes this little U-shape. And that's because cheese actually has two proteins in it, casein and whey. And the different proteins denature and interact at different rates, creating this curve and this clumpy danger zone. Now, this may seem like a lot of effort for pasta science, but studying how proteins interact and change phase could actually help us answer one of the biggest questions in science. How did proteins combine and form in the primordial soup four billion years ago to create life? And while we don't have the recipe for that just yet, the researchers gave us something even better. A foolproof scientific recipe for cacio e pepe. Because it turns out if you increase the starch level enough, you can make a sauce that almost never enters that danger zone. And the secret to getting that level of starchiness? Cornstarch. Now before the Italian grandmothers come for me, all the Asian grandmothers will know that cornstarch is a common secret ingredient to get a rich velvety sauce. And of course the researchers acknowledge that a quote true Italian grandmother or a chef from Rome would be able to navigate this curve on their own intuition. But I am neither of those things, so in many ways I'm perfect to test this, but I'm not gonna make a whole dinner for a video. Holy <laughs> And so with newfound admiration for the skill and science that goes into this classic Italian dish, I only had one last question for these researchers. I'm so glad you guys could make it to America. What do you think about American Italian food? Oh, oh, my oh we love it. It's we so like good. It. It's good. Yum, yum, yum.